All right. Hello, everyone. Are you good? Yeah? Good. Um, I'm the leader of the Norwegian uh, Cyclist Association, which is an interest organization working for better facilities for the Norwegian uh, cyclists. So we're working with advocacy. We have different programs, projects, and uh, services. <coughs> and uh, today I want to tell you a little bit about Oslo. There are big changes in Oslo. And, uh, and when it comes to um, uh, the cycling facilities and also the car free program, uh, as you might have heard of. Uh, this is mainly about the cyclist um, uh, development in Oslo. And um, a little bit about our organization. We are uh, actually uh, over 70 years old. So we now are uh, talking with uh, the Cycle College, which is how, how many years? Ten. Ten? Okay, yeah. So we're trying to learn from each other. We have some history, some culture uh, that we try to, to um, bring over to the Dan and his people, which is, uh, which is uh, yeah, helpful, I, I hope, in the long run. But uh, we were established in 1947, and this is uh, just after the Second World War. Bike was the main means of transport. It was the natural choice for uh, almost everyone. And then we have, of course, the 50s and the 60s, when and the car centric, um, Norwegian became car centric, as almost the rest of Europe as well. And uh, in the 70s, we had uh, a lot of fatalities, a lot of deaths in the traffic. And uh, as may, maybe some of you know, in uh, Netherlands, they had this big campaigning, stop the child killings in the 70s, because there are about 400 uh, children um, uh, that um, uh, um, report, uh, was the killed in the traffic each year. So they protested, it was a right, and they uh, demanded change. And change they got. In Norway, we have the same uh, not the same number, but we have uh, almost 600 deaths a year and over 100 uh, were kids in the 70s. But we didn't go Dutch, we did, uh, this is, uh, you can see what has happened in the, in, uh, the Netherlands. Nationwide, this is the mold share, 27% of all trips are taken by bike. In Amsterdam, over half of the trips are taken by bike. But in Norway, we didn't go Dutch, we went planning. Um, and give, let me give you one example uh, of, a, of a plan. This is 1977, uh, the Norwegian National Transport Plan. And we have a courageous, ambitious goal. We said that every senior town over 5,000, a uh, population of 5,000, shall de develop a connected grid, a network of cycle paths within 1985, that is eight years. And that is uh, the number of towns over with a population of 5,000 is 500, were 500. And do you know how many of the, the towns, cities that uh, made, this, uh, made this happen? Any suggestions? 10? Ten. Result was zero. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next. National transport plan, or not the next, but after that, 1990. All right, maybe we were a bit ambitious in 1977. Let's say 50 cities shall develop a connected network of psychopaths. Result? Any suggestions? <laughs> One. One? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> so, the national plan in 2014. It says we can't have any object in the says number network. But we can have one that says something about number of suggestion. Plans. Yeah. Let's have some plans. But um, as we all know, the benefit of cycling when it comes to health, when it comes to uh, the social economical impact. And when it comes to the environment, 
and the sustainability is clear for all of us. So why shouldn't we do this? Why shouldn't we realize all these good plans? Uh, and that is what, what we are working with every day in Norway. And Oslo, they have tried to um, do something about their own plans and the big change in, uh, um, in Oslo it started in 2015. This is the model share now uh, in Norway. This is the action number, 5% nationwide. And the large cities is about 3 to 9%. Oslo, this is the 2015 model for Oslo, 5% of all trips is taken by bike. But the target in the latest national transport plan, which is uh, from 2018, is 8% nationwide and 20% the largest cities. That, that is quite uh, quite ambitious. In 11 years, we're going to go from 4 or 5% to 20% in the largest cities. And also, they say, ah, forget about 20%. Let's go for 25%. <laughs> and not in 2029, but in 2025. So, I'm asking you, why on earth can Oslo, with 5% mobile share biking, be um, in second place when it comes to the most bike friendliest cities in the world? This is the Copenhagen Ice Index, which is ranking the cities when it comes to bike friendliness. So, why on earth is Oslo in second place? You know, you have Copenhagen, Amsterdam, Utrecht, and so on. And Oslo, crazy. But I'm going to tell you why. Try to tell you why. And I'm going to sort of sum it up in seven steps. The first is the political shift. We had this political shift in uh, 2015 at the election. And we, uh, there were uh, uh, a coalition that had been there for uh, 30 years, 40 years. And this was the first uh, political break, political shift in Oslo. <coughs> And they brought cycling up on the agenda. We always had these grand plans, but now they say we're not going to do something about it. <coughs> this is uh, maybe the, one of the most important people when it comes to cycling in Oslo. She is the Council of Transport and Environment. She has stood on the barricades. She has fought for cycling every day since she went to office in 2015. Um, and she got a lot of, uh, what do you call it, uh, hatred, uh, a lot of, uh, 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 from the car people and, and uh, from different political uh, uh, environment. She got a lot of pressure, a lot of hatred, but she stands tall all the way and kept on working for cycling in Oslo. She'd been ridiculed and threatened and uh, almost, uh, almost, uh, uh, yeah. But she is getting more and more popular uh, amongst the population and of course amongst us who works for cycling and she got our prize our award, which we hand out every second year to a person that are working for uh, cycling. So she said, okay, let's do something about all these grand plans. And the first thing we need is a strategy. So they brought in an agency from uh, Sweden that worked with Stockholm and uh, the back uh, the development um, there. And they said, okay, strategy, as I told you, let's go, uh, let's uh, set the goal. 25% within 2025. 25, 25, easy to remember. And they said, 80% of all the people in Oslo should live within 200 meters reach from the, the cycle network. And 80 to 80, we shall be uh, a cycling city for all ages, both genders. For everyone. This was their uh, primary goals. And when they started out in 2015, this was the typical cyclist in Oslo. May, 35 to 45, so light brown, mountain bike, 
This was the only type of cyclist that dared to cycle in traffic. So, we drew with the strategy, and the strategy said, okay, first we need to build this network, this cycling network. Uh, and we need to plan it well, much better than we have done earlier. So there were a lot of analyses. Uh, for example, this one is, uh, are we uh, producing the, the plan according to where people live, where they work, uh, what their needs are? So there were a lot of analysis of this, uh, the user's needs. <coughs> and you can see, in comparison with uh, the other cities here, Stockholm and Gothenburg in Sweden, also just had, had eight, uh, sorry, 180 kilometers of cycle paths, but Stockholm had 780. So we were a bit uh, behind. Of course, the Stockholm is larger, but even so. So there were a lot, a lot of uh, work to be done. Here is the plan. This is what it looked like in 2015. A lot of missing links everywhere. It's not connected at all. This is what it uh, not look like now, but we are in the, in the, um, we are almost there. There are some, of course, uh, work, a lot of work that has to be done. This is what it going to look like in about 2030, we hope. But there is still a lot of political um, battles to be done, to be won, and there are a lot of budgets that have to have to be uh, to be set each year to, to make this happen. This is uh, the cost for this is uh, 1.3 billion euro uh, to make this uh, plan uh, happen. And uh, by now we're all almost ha halfway. I think we have uh, developed about 260 kilometers and, uh, and uh, Altogether, it's, it's going to be 520 kilometers to the pass. So, number four, we've been through the strategy, we've been to the network, the true network. Now, what about the road design, the standard the road design? That was the next thing the, the, the city was addressing. Because they had, so far in all Norway and in Oslo, years. Uh, the government, the road design, which is very narrow, it's not flexible, it's not meant for urban needs, urban design. So, they also, they also, the city also said, what are we going to do about it? Well, let's make our own standard. And then this is going to be based on the perceived safety of, for, for the users, and the urban needs, it's going to be flexible, it's going to be a tool that uh, the planners can use, that meets the needs of the people. It's going to be high quality than in the standards from the government, and it's going to be normal all planning that we do in the city of Oslo. <coughs> These are some examples uh, in the new standard. And of course, the government wasn't too excited about it. Okay, we have our own another one. Even so, this is some examples of what the new standard um, included. This is the so-called Danish cycle path with a raised uh, cycle lane and the pedestrian sidewalk. This was not a part of the standards uh, that we used before the Oslo standard. Also this one, the big left turn, which a lot of people think is more safe uh, than, uh, than uh, the short turn. Then you have these stops and you can wait on the screen and you can pass over. So two examples of those standards. This is way more, of course. So number five, incremental change, stepwise, step by step. That is uh, their uh, strategy of set, setting this into life, this uh, building the network. Uh, and by that, I mean uh, that, uh, that address the low hanging fruits first. Like this, November 2013. All right, this was the situation in a certain street in Oslo. 
One year later, okay, we have a bit of the broader, we have some lines, and a year after that, okay, even broader, just add another 30 centimeters, and we paint it red, and oops, we have a cycle lane. Even if it's not um, uh, regulated in all the plants, this is sort of uh, making small steps, small changes that uh, is within the, the, their uh, framework for what doesn't have to be regulated, but I, I will come back to that later. This is also an example, and uh, an important part of the change is the restriction for parking cars. Um, the city, was they have uh, removed, uh, I think, uh, almost 3,000 parking spaces in a short time, and they have uh, also um, about two, no, 20,000 uh, free places are now, you have to pay for them. So there are big restric restrictions when it comes to parking, and that is, of course, a part of the car-free program in Oslo as well. And if we uh, get rid of the cars, the parked cars, we make room for bike lanes. And that's what happened All the, in the inner city of Oslo. This is a typical situation that you can see. Just in a few the later, uh, later two years, two three years, this is what's going on all over the central area of Oslo. Number six, dispensation. Um, do you know what the word is? I'm not sure if it's correct in English word, but uh, I think so. And it means that you have uh, the city they apply for dispensation from the regulation plan. It means they don't have to wait for the next regulation plan to make um, um, to, to make a project, a uh, street, to, to work with the street to make that happen. This, this apply for dispensation, and we have uh, we don't want to wait four years for the next regulation plan. Can we do this little step now? And uh, they get yeah, sure. Why not? It's beneficial for the people. It's according to the, the, the roller plans. So, yeah, it's okay. This is sort of a clear strategy, strategy for the city. Okay, let's apply for dispensation. And whoops, then you have a whole grid in a certain part of the, of the city. I'm not sure if it's, uh, if it's something that we can do in Bratislava or other cities, but you can do it in Moscow, apparently. So, number seven, all the measures, because, okay, we have the infrastructure in place, uh, we have uh, told you about how we are uh, rolling out the, the, the bike lanes. <clears throat> I also have to say that uh, the, um, the strategy itself, it says that we, have, we, we want to have a um, separated cycle lanes. So this is a part of the stepwise uh, strategy. We start with the bike lane, and uh, the year following years now, we're going to separate them also from the rest of the traffic because we know that to to get uh, the masses, the female, the children to use the bike in the city, you have to separate them from the other traffic, from the pedestrians, from the cars. Now you are part of the traffic. Even if it's painted uh, uh, red and you have these bike lanes, it don't feel safe enough for most of the people. So that is uh, the coming years, we're going to see more and more of that. I hope. We're going to work for that. We're going to work for that happen. We have the city, a big part of the city with us, but uh, they need the money, money and they have to have, take some political battles to get it done. But other measures? Examples of other measures that uh, are supporting activities to make uh, also a more bike friendly city. And, uh, this is one. This is the so called uh, ex uh, high express, uh, expressway for cycling, which is uh, going from the outskirts of Oslo, where people live, into the center. And we have planned, uh, I think, three uh, cycle expressways. This is uh, the first one, 
which is uh, already uh, finished, and there are two that are planned that will uh, will be finished in the next ten years. And this is what it looked like when it, when it comes to uh, maintenance. In tw this is from uh, 2010. You see, this is a bike lane. <laughs> Not so easy to bike there. And uh, part of the strategy, okay, we, we can't have this. Okay, we have had to do something about this. And they did. So the response time is not slow. When it snows, uh, is is uh, a couple of hours at maximum. Now, this was the situation uh, for days uh, years ago. So it's a clear shift when it comes to maintenance and the response time for snow and uh, also other kind of maintenance. Uh, hmm? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. This uh, is the city bike program in Norway. We have uh, over 100,000 users a year, around 2.5 million trips. And it's a big success. Uh, also, it's not that big a city, it's like Bratislava, maybe a bit bigger. But uh, it's, uh, you can see these people uh, all, over, all over the city. Of course, now we have competition from the electric kick bike. Um, but, um, Still, it's, uh, it's a huge success. So, if you're wondering about it, don't hesitate. You need a city, a city bike program. This is, uh, we call it bike uh, hotel, this bike garage. And this is the first one I built uh, next to the uh, central station in Oslo. And it's, uh, this is a place for uh, 160 bikes, cargo bikes. Uh, it's, you can uh, use an app to lock yourself in and it's very secure. Camera surveillance and everything. So this was the first one. Now we're building more, two or three more uh, at, um, strategic hubs in, in Oslo. So you have to have safe parking for your bike. Another measure, this is uh, the so-called uh, Bike Friendly Employer Program which we are a part of. We have cooperation with the city of Oslo and last year we uh, certifi uh, certified 60 um, uh, working places in the city and uh, we have a new deal now with uh, working uh, towards certifying 50 to 100 uh, more this year. And we are there helping all these uh, employers in how can we make our Workplace better for our employees so they can use the bike instead of driving the car. The city also had a funding program. The, they want to have people to buy e bikes. So they said, okay, if you buy the e bike, you can have a um, thousand euro from us. If you give us the receipt, you get five, 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 one thousand euro back. So they was uh, very popular. The city they expected it. Yeah, maybe it will take half a year to use this uh, use this budget, but it took a couple of weeks as well. So it's uh, very popular, and they have moved on to uh, cargo bikes also. Uh, companies can apply for funding uh, for cargo bikes. And this is a program that's uh, that's going on right now. You have an uh, example for the, the, the mail, uh, biggest mail uh, company in Norway. We bought two of these uh, running around Oslo streets. Another measure is uh, the bike lights, which now are, uh, we can see more and more in the city of Oslo. Own regulation for the cyclist. You can have, you have these small things. So they do to, to support you, so you don't have to, you know, go all the way down. It looks like a small thing, but it's uh, it's symbolic, and it's actually, uh, I think it's actually quite nice to have this. Uh, so I, I want to have more, but it's, it's coming. It's, it's part of the, the whole uh, um, stepwise program. This is Greenway's uh, routes in uh, in Oslo. For people who don't want to drive in the traffic, they can choose 
to go uh, in a greater environment away from the traffic. It's not so easy to do this uh, everywhere, but we, our organization has mapped out different routes in Oslo and all the other big, uh, larger cities in Oslo, in Norway. Um, okay, here are the routes for you to use, because people don't, aren't aware of it. But now they are with this program, the Green Ways. And this is uh, is uh, proof that uh, they are doing something uh, good in Oslo. The Leadership Award for Cycling Promotion 2017 from the Danish uh, Cycling Embassy. The, the prize went uh, to Oslo. And uh, we had uh, a couple of uh, experts visiting us this year. This is the CEOs of the, the largest uh, Cyclist so um, organizations in Europe, and they had their saying about okay, how well is actually Oslo doing when it comes to bike friendliness and the work they are doing. So, are they really serving this seven place also? That's the question that we and the papers asked these guys, and uh, the uh, answer was. Well, Oslo is not the most cyclist friendly city in the world, but the most ambitious. And that is the whole ground for uh, the, the leadership award. It's uh, also the, the ground for the seventh place. The ambitions and the work, the work they are in the middle of now, the work they are doing right now, this is why we are there in seventh place. We are not bike friendly yet, but we're getting there. And we have support from the people. 19 out of 20 citizens in Oslo, they want the, the city to, to uh, prioritize uh, the cycling facilities. So they are supporting the work that's been done. And they see the result every day, and they are more and more convinced that this is the right path. And the, 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 this work for the cycling facilities is a crucial part of the car-free program in, in Oslo. You can see here it's mapped out what area of Oslo, the city, that uh, are um, going to be uh, uh, car-free. And we are now, I, would, I wouldn't say we are car-free, but we are almost there. There are not a lot of cars at all. And it, it has done something about uh, mentality, about the feeling of freedom uh, for the citizens, and not least uh, when it comes to safety. And the result of that is that in uh, 19, uh, 2019, we had no fatalities uh, at all in Oslo among cyclists or pedestrians for the first time ever. Zero fatalities. So, rounding up, these are some of the heroes in this story. This is the people working every day for better cycling facilities in Oslo. These are the planners, these are the guys working uh, with the pro different projects. And it's, uh, it started out only a couple of guys, two, three guys. Now they are uh, close to 30, working every day for better cycling facilities. As you, many of you do here in Bratislava. So keep on working. You are the heroes of Bratislava, as these are the heroes of us. Thank you.
A, takže napriek tomu, že Morgan vymenoval viacero stratégií, tak ja sa ho spýtam tú prvú otázku, že ktorá z nich z tých stratégií bola najdôležitejšia. A o chvíľku, hneď po tej mojej otázke, poprosím vás, premyslite si akúkoľvek otázku, ktorú chcete položiť a budem mať priestor niekoľko minút. So, so I'm starting with my question first. Yeah. So you have presented several strategies. Yes? So, so you personally, which one is the most important? If it's possible to say so. I think the most important, and it's not something you can order, uh, is the political shift. You need the people wanting to do something about the situation that has the power to do something about it. And that's what we got to know something. But you, of course, you can do something about it, you have to vote. Uh, thank you very much. Takže poďme na tú diskusiu, pokojne môžete položiť otázku v Slovenčine, alebo komentár, nech sa páči Tomáš, a dáme handku do kvíli. Ja som sa chcel pýtať, že aká veľká je tá car-free zóna v Osle, z hľadiska nejaké nejaké zrobne? How big is the car-free zone in Oslo? Uh, I didn't quite hear... Uh, how big or how large is the country? What's the area of the country zone? Do you know where I'm at? Um, I think it's about uh, uh, one square kilometer, a kilometer or something like that. Uh, I think it's uh, the biggest one in Europe. Yeah, the three point three on the I think it's about 3 kilometers uh, times 3 tip kilometers. Some square or some historical center or Is it only in it's, a, it's inside the ring, uh, the first ring, the inner ring. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> More or less. Takže to bolo o veľkosti zóny bez aut. Nech sa páči vzadu. A poprosím, skúsi sa aj predstaviť, že ak ste odkiaľ aká organizácia yeah. Uh, hello, my name is Marina Hoda. I'm from Berlin, which is the second biggest city in Czech Republic. Uh, I lived for half a year in Oslo about seven years ago, so it's great to see the big changes that are happening there. Thank you for that. And thanks for your presentation. And my question is uh, about uh, Oslo, stand Oslo standards, which you talked about because we have something like that in Czech Republic also, which are national standards, and we're actually fighting with it a lot. Uh, so, how actually you made it that you made your own standards, and how did you make the um, people who were designing the streets to have to obey to those standards? As you said, that the government was not happy about it, so how does it actually work uh, to, in consideration with the legislative way? Is, is, it, is it like according to law or how does it work? It's, uh, we have three uh, levels of authorities uh, when it comes to roads the national and uh, the country of the regions and uh, the municipality. Uh, the, the roads that uh, the city, the municipality, are uh, having responsible for, they actually have um, uh, the mandate to decide themselves what the standards should be. Uh, but not very cities are aware of it. In, in Norway, Oslo was aware of it. Okay, let's make our own standards. But of course, they are uh, uh, they are meeting uh, problems when it comes to you know. Okay, this is a national road. We they, we have to use other standards there, the national standards. And uh, but on the, on the road that from, uh, the city roads, they can use their own standards. So they have to be you know flexible. Sometimes. Uh, this, this is sometimes you have better facilities and then you meet a uh, national road and you have to have a uh, lower quality somebody so it's, it's not perfect everywhere but that's the situation but it's a, it's a progress they are you know, in dialogue and we are in dialogue also towards the government to uh, do something about the national standard because it's too narrow it's not good at all okay. One more question. Hello, guys. Uh, if you can ask, uh, uh, no, I wanted to ask. We have in Slovakia this uh, dilemma that people think that it's not possible to cycle in the winter, and I think Norway and uh, also it's quite a cold the city. So, do you have any tips for us? Uh, how do you cycle in the winter? Yeah. Uh, yes, we have, we have a, a big uh, increase in uh, winter cyclists actually in Oslo and uh, other cities in Norway. 
And uh, number one, use spikes on your tire. Uh, number two, uh, good clothing, you know, <laughs> boots uh, inside. And, uh, and also you have these mittens, you have a lot of uh, uh, different clothing that is suitable for, for winter cyclists. Uh, I don't know the tips. Uh, and good maintenance of the car, of the, the, the bike. You have to wash the bike uh, regularly because of the salt. My name is Val, Luna is a road in the winter. So basically, plow push the snow to the right of the cyclist lane. The plow on the cyclist lane to the, to the left, so you will keep the snow in the middle. Or, because I know it's very expensive to take the snow and put it behind the city. It's uh, very expensive, so how do you do it with the snow on the road? It's a good question. I think maybe he wants to sort of talk about that uh, in, in his presentation, about the wind okay. turbines. Yeah, okay. yeah. But uh, mainly they are removing it. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, with trucks? With, with trucks when it's too much. When they don't have any spare room for uh, relieving it. Yeah. So they are getting the snow on trucks and driving on the same. Very expensive, of course. Yes. Uh, Maria Malis, Zyganki. Uh, you said that you have a uh, different regulation on the state uh, roads and the uh, local roads. Yeah. Is it aligned with the police approach as well? Do the police yes. support your ideas? Well, um, not. The, 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 the police is uh, earlier they had the, the, the they decided the, the, the sign, signage they had the responsibility for signs but in I think 2015 2016 the city took over that responsibility and that was also a crucial part of you know getting more bike friendly solutions in, in Oslo. Um, apart from that they are not so involved in the standards uh, as such but they are uh, uh, maybe a bit um, uh, harder to work with when it comes to, to um, when it comes to the culture and, and uh, how they, uh, the cyclists are uh, you know uh, out of that behavior their behavior so they are fining cyclists you know for this and that and they, of course the cyclists should should follow the rules but uh, we are not always uh, uh, agreeing upon what uh, the, the definition about uh, the, the rules. We have one case now uh, where uh, a cyclist, a member of us, was fined uh, because he was uh, in front of uh, uh, buses and uh, cars, and they said, "You are making traffic here. We have to fine you." So this, um, we are not agreeing on that uh, file. So this is uh, being through the, the just you. Uh, now it's on, uh, been appealed up to the highest level in, in Norway. Uh, highest court? Yes, highest court. Yes, high school. High so it's going to be a big uh, principled discussion about uh, what cyclists can do in the traffic or not. Okay, so thank you very much. It looks that you are, uh, there is a lot of influence and a lot of negotiations between police and, and city and uh, cyclists of the federation and so on. Okay, thank you very much once more.